Congolese people. My dearest compatriots. Here we are at the end of the year 2021. A year which ends in the pain, suffering and misery, for the Congolese people. But also and especially, in the fear a voice of our nation disappear. On last December 25th, day of the nativity there was an explosion in the city of beni which killed several of our compatriots the horror of this heinous act came to add to the killings and massacres recorded in the eastern part of the republic i offer my condolences to all the families who have lost loved ones this year because of generalized insecurity Pernicious spirits want to kill our country. The Democratic Republic of the Congo, that we have received as a heritage from our elected officials. While the world continues to face an existential health threat, in the DRC, we note an irresponsible inaction. Only 0.1% of the Congolese population is vaccinated against COVID-19 to this day. The lowest rate in Africa. My dearest compatriots, I have once again the honor of addressing you, as you as the one you have carried and the majority of you in the presidential elections of December 2018, to defend our values and rebuild our nation. Since, I have not stopped to take every day and at every moment the measure of this of this responsibility. In this end of year 2021, full of suffering and ordeal, fueled on one hand by the unacceptable war that has been imposed on us in the eastern part of our country and on the other hand by the misery in which our population languishes. I feel more this heavy responsibility. That is why. And I will never back down. I will never deviate from this firm will that inhabits me to raise whenever it is necessary. The banner of resistance against any form of violations of constitutional rules, injustice, betrayal of the fatherland, corruptions, plundering of the state money, of lies, of violation of the integrity of our territory, of anti-values, and infringement of the fundamental rights of the Congolese people. It is the very essence of our fight. My dear compatriots, from the Congo hold-up, to the 2018 electoral hold-up, to the program of the 100 days hold-up, and the RAM swindle. Without forgetting, embezzlement of all kinds, including, the funds intended for the fight against COVID-19, and the pay of civil servants, one can easily realize, how much and how, our country is bled dry by a minority of opportunists, without faith nor law, whose only vocation is illicit enrichment. This clique takes pleasure to deceive the opinion with hollow slogans and promises as long as the kilometers traveled by Magellan and nothingness. My very dear compatriots, while the functioning of the Court of Accounts is paralyzed on purpose, the General Inspectorate of Finance IGF, symbol of a cosmetic fight against corruption, is used as a screen for a system of institutional looting well trained. The judiciary remains at the orders, the appointed deputies, clinging to their personal interests, 
shamelessly haggle over their collaborations with the help of jeeps and other under-the-table deals. At the same time, some religious denominations regrettably put themselves in the service of this mafia. It's scandalous. The plundering of the state money, which is at the heart of this system, finds even evil theorists who justify and defend them blindly. If the thieves and the corrupt are not effectively condemned, who will pay for the suffering inflicted on the Congolese people? Ultimately, we find ourselves in a new ubiquitous and discriminatory situation where it is the small and and the weak who languish in the prisons while the door of those are widely open to let white-collar criminals escape. No. We refuse that the misappropriation of public funds be decriminalized for the bandits wearing ties. The turkeys of this farce is the Congolese people who have fallen and been abused. And with him, it is the country which is ruined. The great victim, it is our children and grandchildren, whose future is sacrificed on the altar of unconsciousness, of greed, and arbitrariness. Our nation has become a kind of no man's land, where impunity reigns, and where the public officials are accountable of nothing. My very dear compatriots, allow me to recall part of my speech on the occasion of the 60th anniversary of our independence. I quote, as much the soap operas of the Hundred Days program has not yet delivered all its secrets regarding the revelations and the serious accusations made during the Camir trial, and for which Mr. Felix Shisekedi should at least answer politically. As much I demand that all the light be shed on the sphere of the $15 million of oil tankers, on all the activities of the of the 100 days program, as well as on the, the misappropriation of funds operated for the past 18 years. End of quote.